I am neither this nor that. What am I? Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Anandam param sutam. Anandam param sutam. That you are. Who am I if I am not the mind? Who am I if I'm not the body? Now what makes you presume that you are not the body and not the mind. What point of reference have you to tell you that I am not the mind and neither the body? Show me that point of reference. Ah. When I say to myself, I am that I am, who is this that I am that I am? Who is this Brahmasmi? I am Brahma. Who is this that could say that I, as the mind and body, is non-existent? Then what part of you is existent? to make you cognize your non-existence. You don't know. That is for sure. If I said bullshit. Your mind is a reality. Your body is a reality. And the spiritual self within you is a reality, but it is only the mind that could cognize its own realness, which is also, at the same time, erroneous. You say, I am this body. Now this body has been changing so much. When I was an infant, like a little baby there, hmm? then I grew up into adolescence, became an old man. Uh, I'm not too old, really. <laughs> so, this body is the same body, but over a period of time has gone through various changes. Hmm? Like putting on a little meditational tummy. <laughs> My reality lies in my body and my reality lies in my mind, but who is that which perceives this particular form of reality? The spirit that is within you, the divinity that is within you, is non-cognizable and neither would it cognize anything besides itself in its own cognition. The mind says this is a handkerchief. Why does the mind say that this is a handkerchief? Because my mind or certain relection, uh, recollections or experiences that has gone through me in this lifetime or even in past lifetimes perhaps make me cognize this to be a cloth a piece of cloth to be used on my nose where does this come from? so you go further back all the time ask yourself the question that who is saying that this is a handkerchief and this is a nose. Who is saying that? My mind is saying that. Then you will ask yourself what perpetuates this mind in this mode of having
having this particular kind of cognition. Like that you go on and on and on until you reach a point. which is a zero. I deny the body because I feel within myself, or rather some force is feeling within myself that I am far beyond the body and the mind. Now the greatest mistake that has been made or is being made by various theologies is the denial of the body and mind. At this moment, how do you stand? You stand in the position of saying my body exists, my mind exists, and the cognitive factor also exists, so therefore I am existence, and being existing, I can deny nothing, for I am that I am. The I that cognizes the very existence of this body and this mind is thought forms, to which we can call the ego self, that is forever trying to preserve itself in the cognitive factors of saying, I am this handsome guru. <laughs> now, what is the ego worth? The ego is worth nothing because it is just a formation of patterns through the various experiences that you have gone through and that has left impressions. Those impressions is that which we call the ego. Now, I put my hand on this table and I remove this hand. But an imprint is there. So the hand is not there anymore. But an impression or an imprint of the hand is existing on this table. Get out your magnifying glass and you'll see it. What a reality is there in this imprint. This very imprint that cognizes me as a body, this very imprint that cognizes me as a mind. So my body and mind is totally dependent upon that imprint. What is the reality of this imprint? Nil. So now, if I deny this imprint, hmm, or if I do not attach value to this imprint in bringing about the recognitions of the existence of this body and this mind, then I am basing 